Hello, I'm Jeffrey Goldberg from 1Password, and um, I'm here to talk about something that we did a couple years ago. Uh, it was a password cracking competition. Um, and as I said, it was a couple years ago. Uh, uh, so this is a belated uh, report on it, but uh, here it is anyway. People have heard bits and pieces about it here. So really the question that we were after, the reason that we ran this whole thing in the first place, was uh, to help us answer the question that people asked us, uh, which was how strong should your master password be? And the old answer, uh, you know, that, that we gave before this was that your master password uh, should be the strongest you can reasonably and reliably remember and use. And after this, the um, answer was, uh, it depends, but generally the strongest you can reasonably and reliably remember and use. And you might think that it really wasn't all that wise to give out about $30,000 in prizes uh, just to up add the it depends, uh, which of course it depends is the answer to almost any security question. Um, but before I get into the competition and what we learned from it, uh, I do need to explain something that's a little bit unusual about 1Password. Uh, it's a bit weird um, uh, in that uh, all of the computation and key derivation is performed client-side and client-side uh, the user's master password is combined with a high entropy thing uh, we call it the secret key, which is also stored client-side. Um, and given the way that these are combined together in the key derivation, that means that what we have server-side cannot be cracked even if somebody has a terrible master password because the attacker would need to guess this high entropy uh, secret key. Uh, so the role of the master password, of the one password master password, is thus to defend against an attacker who gets user data from the user's device. That's the threat um, that we're after. And this is the situation in which the user's master password is pretty much their weakest point. Uh, and uh, so uh, just adding to this, uh, there's a paper a while back that talked about circumstances in which, uh, in which you don't care about the strength of a password, not a one, pa not a, a password manager password, uh, but you don't care about the strength of a password when, um, uh, uh, unless it is so weak that it can be guessed through an online attack or if you can manage to get it so it's completely uncrackable. And the argument is for, is for a particular class of problems, the strength of the master password in between doesn't matter. Uh, with something like a password manager, um, uh, the opposite is the case. Uh, again, consider the attacker who gets a victim's uh, uh, password manager data and in our case, the secret key from the user's own device, um, uh, how long the, the victim has to really start changing their passwords that are stored in their, in, in their password manager depends crucially on the strength of their master password. Uh, whether it's gonna take days, weeks, months, years, decades to crack, um, matters a great deal in these circumstances. So we really do have to care about these things. Uh, I'm gonna skip it, I've got way too many slides. Um, uh, but the passwords that we were particularly interested in uh, was were um, these three word passwords from our password generator, which were about 42 and a half bits and uh, the question of how long does it take to crack is pretty
pretty much the wrong question, um, as anyone involved in cracking knows. Uh, and a much more useful question is how much does it cost to crack? Uh, so we wanted to try to design a contest that would help us understand how much it would cost uh, uh, for someone to crack those passwords. Um, uh, and uh, we found that, that for those it cost about uh, 4,300 US dollars. Um, and that translates out to about six US dollars per two to the 32 guesses. So there you go. There's your spoiler. You don't need to listen anymore. Um, okay, there were lots of things that we wanted um, in designing the contest. We'd never designed a contest before. Um, uh, and you can read about those at your leisure. Uh, also, some of the details about how we set the whole thing up. These are all, this is all publicly available um, uh, in links that I'll, I'll give you. You know, every, everything was done very openly, transparently. Um, uh, one thing I will say is that when we generated the challenges, um, uh, uh, we chose to keep a copy of the actual passwords that the, that the challenges were created from uh, for a reason that turned out not to uh, apply, but it turned out to be very good in the long run that we did keep these. Um, okay, so when we strip out all of the irrelevant uh, complications of the one password KDF and we strip out concerns about the secret key, the guts that we needed to check uh, is PBKDF is a is a hundred thousand rounds of PBKDF two uh, using HMAC SHA two fifty six, um, and uh, uh, we posted seven challenges, um, uh, and they looked something like this, um, uh, with uh, with assault and. Uh, the derived key, uh, and the goal was to find out what password they were generated from. Uh, we also showed how these passwords, how these passwords were generated um, using our our password generator, um, and gave the list so that the uh, uh, the passwords the passwords were generated uniformly. Um, Okay, uh, we also published a couple of test things that so people could test their configurations and test that that what we said worked. Um, so there's really all the same, except also actually includes the answer. Um, okay, uh, the tricky part was getting the incentives right uh, for the contest. Uh, if we'd known how much it would have cost to crack these things, then we could have gotten the incentives. We could have set the incentives a lot better. If we'd known how much it would cost to crack these things, then we wouldn't have really needed to run the contest in the first place. Um, but the sort of initial guess going in was somewhere somewhere between $500 and and uh, five thousand dollars, basically, um, uh, a range of of four bits, um, you know, of 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 of, of uh, four doublings. Uh, all of the money amounts that I talk about are uh, U.S. dollars, uh, uh, twenty eighteen U.S. dollars. Um, anyway, so when we first offered this, we offered uh, these prizes, um, uh, 496 for first place winner, um, and it quickly became apparent from people looking at the contest and starting things up that uh, this really wasn't going to pay for, for, for people's efforts. Uh, so on June 11th, um, uh, we doubled the prizes and we added a fourth place one. And on July 26, 2018, we doubled again. So now the prizes are four times our initial thing. Um, 
quadrupling the prizes still wasn't enough to really make it worthwhile. Uh, we're getting a lot of feedback from uh, uh, from participants, and you know, you know, they were reporting on their efforts. Um, so we needed to come up with a system of hints. Uh, the hints needed to be uniform and measurable, and and not bias things in certain ways. Uh, and uh, I'm gonna just skip through this, but it did turn out to be really useful that we kept a copy of the solutions. Otherwise, we never would have been able to generate the hints. Uh, but but uh, the guts of it were that the hints were the first first hint was was a leading bit of a fast hash of the password. Uh, so uh, uh, leading. Uh, there you go. Uh, there's a, s a slight problem in that I was at my mountain hideout in Colorado. The the um, external medium that I'd stored the heavily encrypted uh, solutions file on was in Plano, Texas, and I had places to go in between. Anyway, uh, uh, there's a timeline for when we discussed published uh, details about the hints and uh, and we did the the first bit on August 23rd um, and on September 24th a month later uh, we did a second bit and so we have now cut down the search space the remaining search space that people had to go through um, uh, uh, by four uh, halved and halved again, and that's after that. We can skip that. Uh, after that is when we started seeing results. Uh, so middle of October, um, and then November. The first three uh, prizes went to variants of the same team. They kind of kept on adding people uh, to the team to to their team. Uh, uh, after each win, um, and uh, fourth place, and I would say that they is that that team of, of very sophisticated and professional uh, password crackers um, kindly stepped aside to let some of the people who are new to password cracking uh, 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 still compete for fourth place. Um, so it was so it was people who'd never done password cracking before who did fourth place. Um, okay, uh, and one of the crucial criteria to actually get paid your winnings was to do a write up of your experiences, your estimates of your costs um, during the whole thing, um, because again we wanted to know how much it costs to for somebody who's incentivized to crack these things uh, to crack them. And the write ups are absolutely fascinating. Um, uh, please go and, 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 and read them. Um, anyway, uh, there are a couple ways from the various write-ups to try to get an estimate of the costs. Uh, uh, came up with 4,000 something US dollars uh, is what it would take uh, is average time, uh, average cost uh, to crack one of those three word passwords um, without hints. Um, and then working from there, uh, we get to the $6 per uh, two to the 32 bit guesses. And, um, uh, and again, this is all PBKDF2. Uh, so 10,000 rounds of PBKDF2 uh, and HMAC256. Uh, here's a cool table that you can go and look at by following links that are available in the slides um, of, of what the costs using this KDF would be for different sorts of things that are uh, that the one password password generator could generate. I should warn you that not all of the features that are used here are actually exposed to users in uh, configuring the generator, but 
um, uh, but it's actually built in there underlyingly. So uh, 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 short things to highlight is again uh, forty three hundred dollars um, uh, for these three word ones and uh, for the uh, four word one uh, it's about eighty million dollars. So adding a single word and using our generator makes a really big difference. Okay, there were a number of things that I got wrong in this. There are a couple technical things that uh, if you go back over some of the skipped slides, you'll see um, uh, uh, with doing the hints. Uh, but mostly what I got wrong were things having to do with setting the incentives. I was aware of these things, but did not fully take them into account. And so one of them, of course, is pricing this so that it's worthwhile for people to participate and compete, uh, knowing that they might not win. So making the thing profitable for the winner is fine and necessary, but you need to make it more profitable. You, you need to make it a big enough win that people will, in a sense, gamble on it, knowing that they're competing with others. Uh, so, uh, uh, and this was actually a reason, this is something, this is, we were getting this from feedback um, during the discussion. I've got links to that whole online discussion uh, where this thing was discussed. Again, for anyone interested in cracking or some of the choices that we made, that's a really good place to look. Another thing with incentives, and uh, this is harder, um, largely because I don't know anything about cryptocurrency mining, uh, but it's the notion of opportunity costs. So even if you deem that it is profitable for you to, to, to participate and factoring in the fact that you might not win, um, it, you know, it, it, while it can be profitable, could you do something better with could you do something better with your time and equipment and knowledge um, than dedicating it to this effort? Uh, so this is something known as opportunity costs, is that uh, when you choose to dedicate resources for one thing, uh, it means that, uh, that, you're, that you're not dedicating those same resources to something else that might be more valuable. And so the difference in the valuables with that might be is a cost. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, and so, of course, you know, there were people who did, uh, people new to password cracking, mm -hmm. who did turn over uh, cryptocurrency rigs uh, to these attempts. And because of these two failures at the beginning, even though in the end, after the hints and af after the twice doubling of the prizes, it was worthwhile, because it wasn't worthwhile or may not have appeared worthwhile at the very beginning to potential participants, uh, we didn't get that many experienced uh, password crackers in. I mean, uh, uh, we, you know, we had the winning team and we had a couple others who, who played around for a bit. Uh, but uh, it would have been nice to have had, to have had multiple experienced teams competing with each other. Uh, and instead, I suspect that they looked at it, they looked at their chances, they looked at the costs, they looked at the opportunity costs and decided not to participate. But a huge thanks to those who did and stuck with it. And, um, and again, we've learned quite a bit. Um, uh, our answer is still, it depends. But uh, but we now have something more concrete to tell users 
and uh, and to help users consider their own threats, um, you know, and whether you know whether an attacker who gets a hold of their data is going to put in um, four thousand dollars worth of efforts. And um, and that's it. I will take questions at this point.